If I could witness one episode in the history of this world, I would be here in April 1573. Because finally, after nine months of toil, loss of life amongst the crew and two of his brothers, and a foiled mule train robbery a couple of months before, Drake struck it rich behind me. This is the Campos Plain. On the morning in April 1573, Drake woke up. He was probably sleeping on this hilltop and he sent one of his black escaped slave friends down to the road to see if he could hear the mule train bells ringing around the necks of the beasts. The Cimarron returned and Drake took the Cimarrones and his French partners and laid ambush at the side of the road. The road here ran between a brook on the east side called the Juan Miguel and the River Campos, which is today called the River Nombre de Dios. And we owe it to Caleb Duckworth for educating us that the River Nombre de Dios was the Campos from a document that he found. So that clarifies precisely that Drake was here. The French were at the south end of the pack train and Drake was at the north end. And the pack trains were two trains of 75 mules and one train of 50, each beast carrying about 200 pounds of treasure. And the ambush commenced with the whistle as a command and the assailants showered the 45 Spanish guards with bullets and arrows. The Spaniards put up a brief resistance. The ones at the back of the mule train fled towards Panama City and a few escaped to raise the alarm in Nombre de Dios, about two and a quarter miles north. And the robbery took place so close to Nombre de Dios that the Spaniards were marching in a casual state of disorder because they thought they were home and dry and safe. Drake knew that he had about an hour before the Spaniards would get to Nombre de Dios to raise the alarm, an hour to raise reinforcements, an hour to get back. The Spaniards arrived in Nombre de Dios at noon, so the robbery took place about 11. So the Spaniards were back here by about half past one, two, and in Drake Revived, Drake reckons that he heard the horses coming just for poetic license, I think, but I think he was gone before the Spaniards actually saw him here. And when the Spaniards came back, they saw all the mules sat in the road with a few bars of silver lying around. But the French had hidden excessive treasure in the river number on the sand islands that you can see that pepper the riverbed, and Drake hid his share of gold and silver they couldn't carry in the brook. The joint forces retreated. Each man, if he was carrying 25 kilos of gold, and today a kilo of gold costs about 30,000 pounds, you can work out that each man was carrying at least half a million pounds. And the blacks' friends, they were carrying the gold free of charge. So this was extra bonus for the French and the English to share out 50-50, although Drake had less men than the French. Drake returned home and built himself a ship, which he called the Pelican. Later, we know it as the Golden Hind. And as a result of him climbing the tree at Cerro Brewster, Drake took that ship around the world. And it was the riches from this voyage that happened below us on the Campos Plain that set Drake's career in a higher plane. And this video brings us full circle in tracing Drake's early guerrilla voyage of the 1570s to full circle. And we have now concluded digitally draking in Panama. Gracias por su atención terminado.